These institutions, I am referring to three pillars of our democracy. These institutions, if rendered vulnerable, would imperil our democracy and thereby derail our development, developmental trajectory. There are forces, and these forces inimical to our nation, operating from within and without, a pernicious agenda, sinister designs that are not easy to instantly discern. We might be welcoming them in any of these three institutions without knowing their real intention, thinking they are our well-wishers. Fact, distinguished audience, is otherwise. I must invite your attention. Endeavors to infuse a narrative that what happened few days ago in our neighborhood is bound to happen in our Bharat is deeply concerning. How can a citizen of this country, having been in parliament, one belonging to distinguished legal fraternity, the other seen enough of Indian Foreign Service, both had the occasion to hold positions of critical consequence in governance as ministers. Take no time in saying what happened in neighborhood will happen in India. Be on watch out. I'm talking to a very distinguished audience, an audience that is discerning. I leave it at that. One of the operational mechanisms of these anti-national forces, and this is now more than apparent, they operate to hide their legitimate actions using platforms of our fundamental constitutional institutions. You know more than I do. Our institutions are being exploited by these forces to set afloat narratives that are not only anti-national, but aimed at derailing the nation is democracy. Who can dispute today India is the only country in the world that is having that kind of economic rise which none has? Never in the history of any country there have been accolades pouring in day in and day out. There is a country on the rise in every aspect, from sea to land to space and air. Be on the watch. Honorable, distinguished audience, in a scenario like this, let us work together. Let us work in together, in togetherness. Let us work looking through one prism where we always see our nation first. National interest can't be calibrated. It is the supreme precedence, the only precedence, and we are committed to nation being first before anything else. <laughs> and therefore, distinguished audience, let us work to insulate our institutions from these nefarious designs that seek to destroy our democracy. And if they manage to make some inroad, don't observe silence, neutralize them. Because your silence will resonate in the years of future generations. And they will say what our forefathers were doing. Could they not rise to the occasion mentally and otherwise? <laughs> Let me now refer to high and lows of journey so far of these institutions, but for the subject, I'm limiting it only to judiciary. And I'm referring on the anvil of the doctrine I had referred to a while ago. India takes pride in nurturing a robust independent judiciary that has ever been in the aid of sustaining and blossoming democratic values, with one painful exception. And we should never forget that exception. And that was during draconian darkest period of our history since independence, the emergency proclaimed 
by then Prime Minister Srimati Indira Gandhi in June 1975. Distinguished audience, we are part of a very elevated institution that is a very strong pillar of democracy. But at that time, then the judiciary at the pinnacle, the highest court of the land I am referring to, the formidable citadel of basic rights of citizens yielded meekly to the brazen dictatorship regime of the then Prime Minister Srimati Indira Gandhi. And what it led to? Legs were put behind bars, subjected to indignities. Many of them became Prime Ministers of this country, governors, ministers and contributed in various fields and continue to contribute. It will be absolutely unbecoming of any citizen of this country to forget that dark period. Let me remind you, D-Day at Normandy is never forgotten, remembered every day for a cause. We must never forget it. And since the act was against constitution, against the nation, against citizen, against humanity, can't forgive. The highest court ruled. And what it ruled? No one can move any court for un enforcement of rights as long as the emergency lasts. You are distinguished members of legal fraternity, or some of you part of the bench. This was the ruling. No one can move any court for enforcement of rights as long as emergency lasts. And next, emergency can last as long as the government wishes. Liberty was held to ransom of an individual. Apex court ruled those arrested thousands in number across the country without any fault of theirs, except at heart their nationalism, except that at heart they believed in Bharatma. Ruled, you are barred from seeking any judicial help. But what is more important is, in doing so, the apex court overturned the verdicts of nine high courts of the country. And in that illustrious list of those nine high courts, this high court figures. I am indeed proud to be part of this institution. During emergency, this institution <laughs> held its ground along with eight others, total nine. And therefore, distinguished audience, the High Court, the High Court of Judicature for Rajasthan holds a place of pride, being amongst the nine Jewel High Courts in the country that held, despite the imposition of emergency, a person could demonstrate that his or her detention arrest was not in compliance with rule of law. But in the Apex Court also, we had a silver lining. The same dissenting voice of Justice S.R. Khanna found resonance, not here, not in the country. In New York Times that reflected I caught, if India ever finds its way back to the freedom and democracy, the world had lost hope because the world was ignorant of Indian genius. Jail or no jail, Bharat Mata has to be nurtured. It has to blossom as a democracy. But New York Times reflected, I quote, if India ever finds its way back to the freedom and democracy that were proud hallmarks of its first 18 years as an independent nation, someone will surely erect a monument to Justice H.R. Khanna of the Supreme Court. Unquote. Never forget these words. Younger people are not aware of it. Make sure every Indian of any age, particularly impressionable minds, come to fully know these developments. 
sacrifice of millions of people in this country alone helped it back on democratic rails. It is our lot now. It is on our table. It is our brief now to sustain and blossom democracy. Over the years, there is fortunately emergence of a spinally strong, well-nurtured constitutional democracy at all levels that taking recourse and important enforcement to an emergency is ruled out. The nation has matured. Its institutions have grown up. India is the only country in the world that has a structured constitutional democracy at the village level. You have a constitutional provision for that at this urban level, part nine and nine capital of the constitution. So now, even if someone gets into the group, the enforceability cannot take place. However, I implore each one of you, particularly the younger generation, never forget eternal vigilance is the price of freedom. And this vigilance must be dictated by your in-depth knowledge of the suffering of lakhs of people in this country during the draconian period of emergency imposed by one individual, the Prime Minister of India, then Srimati Indira Gandhi.